Okay guys, so let's go through the KK2 board. Um, obviously you're going to see the safe screen first. I don't have a receiver plugged in, so with this current setting I can't actually arm it. Um, it's got a couple extra details on here. Self-leveling is on and the eye of PI is on. Uh, the self-leveling setting is only on because I don't have a receiver plugged in, so I can't actually... It doesn't know which way my switch is, so it automatically goes to on. Um, the eye of PI you can turn off, and we'll go over that a little bit. So first off, we've got the PI editor. I don't want to go into too much detail on this one because the tuning is actually, it's not difficult, it's actually this board is very, very friendly in, in the settings that it can fly, but um, getting it truly dialed in really does require its own video. But briefly, what we've got is we've got uh, all three axes. You've got aileron, elevator, and rudder. Now, there is a setting inside that allows you to connect the aileron and the elevator, which generally on a multi-rotor, you want those settings to be exactly the same. So within there, you've got P gain, P limit, I gain, I limit. The, the P gain and the I gain are basically going to be controlling the, um, the sensitivity of that element. And then the limit, you can almost think of as travel adjustment, how far it will allow the motor to change um, to counteract the motion it senses. So out of there, we've got um, receiver test. I have no receiver plugged in here. If I did, it would actually show you a, num a numerical value of the position that your transmitter is showing the board. Uh, this is really neat because you can actually go in and actually um, dial in your sub trims so your board knows that you are straight level. Um, that way you won't have your first maiden and think that it's going to go off in one direction because your sub trim is off. So this allows you to really set up the board properly with your radio. If you go out of there, you go into mode settings. A couple things here, self-leveling, you can actually change the, um, the position of the self-leveling, how you turn it on. Uh, I prefer auxiliary, it uses the fifth input there on your receiver port and you plug that into your gear channel or an auxiliary channel and uh, program that to a switch. That way you can turn your self-leveling on and off at will. And uh, you also have an option to do it on the stick where you can turn it on. Um, basically, when you're arming, you can turn self-leveling on. And uh, auxiliary is the best way to go about it. You can turn the IFPI off, which mostly counteracts drift. So this could fly with essentially just the P portion, just the gyro portion. And um, it flies just fine like that. It actually flies very well with just the P portion but um, the eye is going to counteract drift quite a bit more. So if you needed to, you could turn it off if you're going to be running on an airplane or you know, I'm sure there's some specific settings that you'd want that. Arming, two ways to do it. You can do it through the stick, just like a standard uh, multi-rotor board, or you can just keep it on. This is a great feature for people uh, using this as a stabilizer for airplanes, because this way they don't have to have um, a, a plug in their throttle position, or excuse me, their uh, rudder position in order to arm the board. So you can do automatic on or stick. Um, make sure that that's set to stick for a multi-rudder because you don't want to have to bump your throttle or you don't want to bump your throttle and you know that this board is constantly on. Just make sure that's on stick for any multi-rudder. Um, here's that link that I was talking about in the P&I adjustment. You can turn it on and off. I recommend keeping it on because you want that uh, those two axes to match. Down from there, stick scaling. This is a great feature to the KK2 board. This really does set it apart from the original KK, purely because the original KK was such a success because of all the firmwares that came out, and um, you know people that wanted to do flips and rolls, they would pick up you know stick scaling, stick scale three or three point five or four, and uh, flash their boards with that in order to get essentially more control out of it. This way, you can just go in and dial in the percentage of control that you need on each individual axis. So you can really dial in the sensitivity of the uh, of the controls. If you're doing flips and rolls, bump that up. If you're going to be doing an aerial platform, you want that pretty low so it's nice and controllable. Miscellaneous. Okay, so the first thing we've got here is your throttle adjustment. Um, this is just an endpoint adjustment. It's, you know, most of the time you can keep it set to the stock 10, uh, but for people that are having trouble arming, you might need to dial this in. LCD contrast, pretty simple stuff. All right, here we go, height dampening. An interesting feature on this board, actually. 
what high dampening does is it uses the third axis, the z-axis, um, that actually does have a z-axis control, and it will compensate for forward motion altitude drop or sideways motion altitude drop. I played around with it a little bit. It's um, it's not for people that have full control and really know how to fly their multi rotors around. You know, if you go into forward motion, you automatically know to increase your throttle in order to not decrease your altitude. But this sort of does it automatically for you. So if you're going to test it out, I definitely recommend starting at low numbers and testing it out because um, you can get some random gusts of wind, or if you go up and actually just shove your your multi rotor in the air, you'll notice it'll gain altitude on that. So um, a pretty neat feature, something fun to play with. Aerial platforms may enjoy it, uh, or FPV guys may enjoy it more, but um, still a neat feature. The, the alarm I actually haven't played with too much, so I, I don't have too much info for you guys on that. Next up, self-level settings. For self-leveling, always start out at zero. This is what I've found. Don't bump these up to anything near the sensitivities of your uh, P&I gains. So what you want to do is just set it to zero and start playing with it. Um, remember that your self-leveling takes away control from your right stick if you're using mode two. It basically takes away your your pitch and your roll, um, but it does leave you full throttle and yaw control. So if you're if you're getting to a hairy situation and you flip your self-leveling switch, essentially what it will do is it will flatten itself out and um, and give you the ability to reorient yourself with the craft. So Set to zero to start. It will actually self-level at zero, and you can actually bump up the uh, the sensitivity as you go. Sensor test. This is what the board thinks zero is right now. Um, if you have a sensor that's faulty or uh, not sensing properly, sometimes if you plug these in too fast, or you plug it in and off and then back in, um, you'll end up with one of these not saying uh, okay. It'll say not okay. So um, that's generally a bad sign for that sensor, but uh, let's see here, sensor test, sensor calibration. This is the neat part. You can go through and actually calibrate the sensors. So you want it to be perfectly flat, you want it to be generally mounted to the multi-rotor, and um, hit OK. It'll go through its little countdown. Try not to bump it around when it's doing it. There you go. This is what the board knows as its zero point. This is what perfectly flattened level is. You need to make sure that this is done properly. The board is level with the frame and the, and the props are all level with that. So as long as everything is perfectly level and flat, this is going to be your zero point. This is what your self-leveling settings are going to go based on. If this is off, you'll flip that self-leveling and you'll end up drifting one direction or the other. So make sure that's correct. Okay. ESC calibration. This is basically just a set of instructions. It goes through telling you how to do it. You're going to hold two buttons while you plug your multi rotor in, and it's going to go into its setting. It's just like turning one of the pots on the old KK boards. Pretty simple. There we go, mixer editor. Another thing that makes it very unique, you can see this is a mixing for a quad. You got channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. Those are all, all the ones that are used. You'll notice throttle is always at 100% because you want all four to be reacting at 100% when you're adjusting the throttle. Um, elevator, ailerons, rudder, those are all going to be mixed differently depending on if you're running a quad, a hex, an octa, a tri, you know, what give you. Um, past that, you can actually go from ESC, servo, and then change your rates from low to high. Here's your motor layout. This takes away all the second guessing. Motor one, counterclockwise, or excuse me, motor one clockwise, motor two counterclockwise, three clockwise, four counterclockwise. Right? That really helps with your setup. Here's all the different motor layouts. Right? and then there's a debug feature. So that's basically all of the features here. I was just trying to give you guys a sort of a rundown of what the board does and how it does it. And um, I'm gonna have a couple videos on how to tune these to the best and um, also show some, some basic flight footage. So I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the video and please uh, you know comment. If you've got a question, just let me know and I'll answer you. And uh, thumbs up. Thanks guys, take care.